In this video, I'm going to talk about um, something very elementary yet very important to us. And I'm going to have a series. Of, I have a series of videos that address some important takeaways that maybe we don't discuss in class, but I think are important for us to consider. And this is one of them. And I know the question seems very ba vague in terms of why accounting matters. And you might not give it thought, uh, but let me give you a little history on this so that you have some perspective. If we look at this timeline right here, imagine that the yellow is fiscal year X1, and then the green corresponds to fiscal year X2. And we'll keep it as a two-year illustration uh, for simplicity. But if we have a calendar year company, when we reach 1231, um, they're going to prepare financial statements as of 1231. And then this process of preparing the financial statements and eventually issuing the financial statements can take a couple months. So during this period before the financial statements are actually released, um, you have the audit taking place. So information as of 1231 technically does not become public until later on. Okay, once those financial statements are audited and uh, they are released, then it becomes public information. So you could argue, and it has been argued, that this information that we the investors are getting is based on old, stale information. And the argument for many years was of what use are these financial numbers that are based on past information. Even if the financial statements are released on this same day, 1231X1, the argument still is valid that why are we looking at past information? How is that beneficial for us? So for many years, that argument was actually being posed to the accounting profession. And some of the financial information that we would provide and that we still provide was being challenged. So whether it was released, if you could, at 1231X1 or a little bit later on, it's still all based on past information. The view was we need forward-looking information. And if we're looking at old numbers, how is that forward-looking information? So what we have been able to show through academic studies uh, dating back to 1968 uh, is that... In order to address that issue, we need to show that the financial statement numbers that we provide have importance to the market. And if we can do that, then we can show clearly that accounting does matter to investors and to financial statement users. All right. So I want to talk about this little dance that occurs prior to the earnings, the earnings per share being, being released or the financial statements being released. Here's what happens. And this is what Ball and Brown and Beaver uh, in 1968 were able to show. Before earnings, and when I say earnings, I'm talking about earnings per share. Before earnings are released, there is an expectation as to what a company is going to issue. So, for example, this could be February or March and X2. The expectation could be that a company is going to report $2.00 per share of EPS, okay? And if that's the expectation, at any point in time that a company actually uh, releases an earnings per share that is higher than that, then people are going to be positively surprised. And then the other way around, if you release an actual earnings that's less than the expectation, then people are, are going to be negatively surprised. And that's what I mean right here, where once this information becomes public, what kind of surprise do we have? Do we have a positive surprise or do we have a negative surprise? And this, and before this date arrives, okay, the earnings release, and, and this happens every quarter, you have this dance between the analysts that are tracking that company and management that is trying to guide the expectations of earnings per share. And uh, from the perspective of a manager, you want to not disappoint. So if the market is expecting $2 per share, then you have pressure. And these are some of the things that occur that lead to earnings management. You have the pressure to 
um, meet or beat that expectation of two dollars per share so there's two things or many things you could do but there's two things that occur that I want to mention here one of those things is if, if the expectation by analysts and by folks in the market is too high then management is constantly trying to guide them downward so that at the end of the reporting at the end when earnings are released there is a lower expectation and hence a positive surprise and the reason that's the case is because a positive surprise actually results in a positive price adjustment the stock prices I mean okay if analysts have a very low expectation the opposite could be true as well management through their uh, press releases uh, might be uh, guiding guiding upward okay the analyst upward so either way it could work so how were we in academics able to show that accounting did matter well the studies that begin this whole uh, stream of literature and it's a long stream of literature nowadays um, basically looked at whether what would happen whenever there was a positive surprise and what they were able to document is that in general when you have a positive surprise there was a an abnormal return or a positive reaction to price you could actually see the movement from the positive surprise translating to a positive price adjustment in the stock and the opposite for the negative surprise so while this may be a very uh, elementary finding to us right now or maybe it just seems very um, common sense to us it wasn't back then okay the argument was what when you release when these accountants release this information on this date why is it of importance to us okay and the academic studies that came after this and including these right here we're able to document something that to this day gives us the value that um, is of importance to us and that is that our numbers matter significantly to the market why because these studies showed that wherever the surprise occurred there was a corresponding surprise in price now this is part of the reason why you have these pressures by management constantly at every quarter end okay because I'm, I'm here I'm showing you for the fiscal year end but this happens on a quarterly basis every quarterly on every uh, quarter uh, end you have management disclosing earnings right and then you have analysts forecasting what those earnings are for these companies and where and management is under a lot of pressure to either meet or beat expectations Okay, and the, what are the expectations that they're trying to meet? They're trying to meet or beat the expectations of the analyst forecast. So like a few, I'm sorry, <laughs> this should be meet with two E's. So at um, just like a few minutes ago, I said the expectation is $2. Well, management is under a lot of pressure to report earnings per share that are greater or equal to, if they're going to meet it, uh, $2 per share. Why? Because we have seen this behavior occur over and over again for these companies so the topic here is number one we have shown that accounting is very important to market participants okay that has been shown by early studies dating back to 1968 and what's even more important is that because of these findings because of the fact that we show that accounting matters so much to the market then that's where we see management have all these incentives okay to be able to meet or beat expectations and whether you think those in, those uh, uh, pressures are right or wrong i mean it's it's irrelevant the pressures exist and management has these incentives many incentives to be able to report an earnings that meet or beats expectations so because of that you see perhaps sometimes uh, what we commonly refer to as earnings management because sometimes it's just tweaking a little bit to get you to meet expectations all right so this is just uh, a, an, an overall general idea 
that uh, I think we all should keep in mind. Our numbers are uh, very important. Sometimes we think we're just um, computing numbers based on formulas, and that's not the case. I, what we report is very important. It's, it's as simple as this. I'll go back to the initial argument that I said. The argument by investor participants was why does this information matter if it's all based on past information? Okay? And this finding right here, the finding that there is abnormal returns around these surprises demonstrated that accounting information matters. But here's the bigger one. The folks were saying, why can't we have forward oops, why can't we have forward looking information? And we all know how difficult it is to project numbers. So in accounting, since we value uh, reliability, we tend to not go forward in terms of estimating um, for the financial statements, for information released in the financial statements. But the findings that have come afterwards, after these initial findings, is that, guess what? The earnings that we report actually is correlated to future cash flows. So this is not documented by these studies, but further studies in academics in, a, in a accounting have documented that our simple number earnings per share has the ability to predict future cash flows. So guess what? That even makes it more important in terms of a number for market participants. This concludes the video on why accounting matters and an overall simple view of, uh, I think, something that we all should keep in mind.